<laughs> Sometimes it's good to get lost, though. I totally agree. I'm, yeah. I'm so happy to have you here, man. How are oh, you? I'm, I'm, I'm good. Before that, I am actually so happy to see you too. It's, it's. Uh, this is technically our third meeting, but it actually, it's, it's the second because um, yeah, last time I saw you was like what four years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And less, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, yesterday we met like after four yeah. years for a little coffee. But let me let me just start by by saying how proud i am of everything you, you you're achieving <laughs> honestly you. oh my god this podcast for for starters congratulations it's <laughs> it's a very brave uh project <laughs> and it's i i can see it going somewhere and it's 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 I wonderful really to, to watch and you're one of those underrated tunisians because you're, you're you're actually a very competent man you're achieving wonderful things you oh my you're god. you know uh, a vfx guy who worked on guardians of the galaxy the jungle book the <laughs> breathtaking lion king you're you're part of all this and Thank and you. tunisia media is not giving you enough credit so um it's a pleasure to be here and to inv be invited oh my god i was not expecting this. i mean i have to and then and then man you you drove all the way from london to paris to have this podcast with me with yeah. all this equipment i don't know like what what i did i did to deserve that but but thank you, you. you I, i'm flattered more, more than that you deserve more than that. so you, thank you oh, i don't <laughs> i'm speechless you did not see that coming no. like <laughs> You're like fuck. Thank we're getting off the script. Off the script. <laughs> we're right. completely off. I, I, no, I did not plan Sorry, for this. I, I will not do that again. Uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate what you what you just said. But uh, I don't think I deserve all this I, I credit. I think you do. I think you do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you, you deserve. You you did you you did amazing achievements, and uh, yeah, I'm 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 more than happy to be here and meet you and and do this episode. With thank you. you. Pleasure. Pleasure. How you've been so far? I had. Oh man, I, 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 you know that expression where people say, I've never been better. Okay. But I think for real, I've never been better. That's I can't, I, I can't think of a period in my life where life was so kind, so wonderful. Everything has worked out amazingly this year. It's been a rewarding year. Everything was just, uh, I, I can't even find the words. I'm so grateful. I've never been happier. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm coming out of like, um, you know, you, you're like, you get into the storm, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you can't see, but mm -hmm. you know, there's a place you want to you yeah. get to. There's an island, you want to set foot there. Mm -hmm. It's everything you want, right? You, and, you and can see the light at the end of the tunnel. You have the map. You don't yeah, know where yeah. you're going, yeah, but there's yeah. this magical map. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're, I'm going somewhere. I got to get there. But you go through the storms and the waves. And, and at one point, the ship starts falling apart. And mm -hmm. you're like, Whoa. where am I going? What's happening? I'm not getting any results, you know? Mm -hmm. But when you get to that point all you need is just a little a little push mm -hmm. just keep going a bit further mm -hmm. and then you're out of it and i think 2021 was the year where i'm out i found the island i put down the anchor and i set foot there how good it, how, how, it was amazing this, is, this year is wonderful it's been wonderful i'm so happy for you yeah I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah because that's that's not a, a usual thing that especially in, 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 in <laughs> Tell me, <laughs> we're gonna I mean, have fun here. Yeah, this past two years was not uh, was not easy for humanity. So I, I'm so happy that yeah. at least someone I I know. Well, COVID played a huge part in in helping me see the world in, in a positive in, way, in a much mean. clearer way, okay, and yeah. get that clarity to mm -hmm. get out of the storm. Because when I say you can't make the right decision in the middle of the storm, mm -hmm. when things are falling apart in your life, mm -hmm. it's not easy people you know like when we watch football and mm -hmm. that's part of my job you know yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. analyze football and and I, I watch all these analysts and they're like well the player should have done this and you see there's that player on the other side if he just turned his head all that action that you take 20 minutes analyzing happened in half a second the player didn't have that much time in the middle of the game yeah. to put and process all that thought all those thoughts and for me everything that was happening in my life was happening so fast i couldn't keep up it was all falling apart and I needed time. Mm -hmm. Time was the one thing I needed to 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 come out of the storm. Basically, what was happening? Uh, you have time for this? Oh yeah, oh, <laughs> we only have time. We, we, we have all day. <laughs> uh, what was happening is that I. It's been five years in France or four years in France, mm -hmm. um, and I did not come to Paris. I, I obviously I came to Paris willingly, but it wasn't my first choice. It wasn't okay. the thing I would be doing mm -hmm. i didn't i wasn't like oh i dream of living in paris or moving to paris that, that's not me 
Um, yeah, I wanted to ask you that question. Yeah, this question actually. Tell me why? Why Paris? Why not another? Why not London? I eighty percent or ninety percent of the amazing. people. London is wonderful, <laughs> and I was that. That's where things were heading professionally. I think. Okay. I think. Have I stayed longer in Egypt? Mm -hmm. That's where I was yes, before. Yes. Um, for with the BBC, eventually London would have been the destination. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Every person, and it's been five years here in Paris. Every person I personally asked. Why did you come to Paris? Yeah. If they would just say a woman or, or a guy, <laughs> that's what they say. Okay. Yeah. I just, it's, it's my partner or my ex. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's what happened. I think for me, that's exactly what happened. Uh, mm, I, I came okay. here for a woman. Okay. That's, that's yeah, what yeah, happened. Yeah. Uh, but, but I thought, you know what? That's a good it, excuse. It is a good excuse. Is there a better one? <laughs> I don't think there is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's what would, happened. Would you, would you leave your comfort zone if it wasn't for, for maybe... Well, the, everything... My life in Egypt, although I loved it, I loved every part of it. Well, sorry, uh, yeah. well, I not, not, man, may, not necessarily in Egypt, yeah. maybe in Tunisia, maybe, I don't know. Sorry, I, go ahead. I mean, no, no, no. But my life in Egypt was, was, was beautiful, but was very hard. Okay. So coming to Paris did not feel like getting out of my comfort zone. Ah, it felt yeah. like coming mm -hmm. to something more comfortable. Okay. Okay. Yep, yep. So mm -hmm. that was part of it. Okay. Um, but so... Uh, it's been four years to get back to the yeah, pre-COVID sure. pre mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. It's been four years. My relationship, the person I came for, mm -hmm. the whole thing was falling apart. We came to a realization that it just, it wasn't going to go yeah. somewhere, you know? Um, and with that, I mean, I've let go of a, an interesting opportunity in Egypt with the BBC and I put it behind me and I've been here exploring professional opportunities, working, working really hard, but... I put my focus on the Arab speaking networks mm -hmm. and televisions. Mm -hmm. And after two years, I've come to realize that, I mean, it's going to sound very surprising, right? France is a racist country. Ta-da. Like, <laughs> no, no shit. Who oh, knew? Oh Who my knew? God. France is a racist <laughs> how, how? Oh. So I realized so that there's a huge enough. pay gap between yeah. Arabic speaking jobs, mm -hmm. French speaking jobs, mm -hmm. and English, English. Yeah. speaking mm -hmm. jobs. Um, and I worked really hard for Arabic speaking networks, but at the end of the month, I was not satisfied at all. And I felt, um, upset and frustrated. Even with the BBC? No, I, I wasn't working for the BBC. I was freelancing for a couple of things with the BBC, but mm -hmm. mainly I was working for other networks. I'm going to try to avoid not to be naming networks. No, just sort of, of course, makes yeah, sense. I mean, Sorry. the BBC yeah. is fine. It's, yeah, it's yeah. like, but like wherever I work in no, France. No, 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 I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 we won't, um, we won't do that. Uh, you don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, you don't want to. <laughs> courts and people suing you and things like that. Uh, I don't uh, have the money for it. <laughs> well, I don't want to waste it on that. Um, <laughs> I don't think if, even if I sell my DS3, I don't think it will cover. I, it, cover. <laughs> no, even my motorcycle wouldn't cover for it. So, uh, good, to know, good to know. So yeah, let's yeah. go on and not, not name any, any so, network. <laughs> so um, I just felt I was upset. I was, it was leading nowhere. I was working hard, but I was panicking. Mm -hmm. I was like, where, what, what did I do? I just had a, a job that could have led somewhere in Egypt. I've, I've left it. My, the, the reason I'm here is not leading me to happiness. My job is falling apart. I'm not getting paid what I think I deserve. And this is a racist country. Like, what's, 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 where's, the, where's the bright side in all this? You know, and in France, and I've been, I came also like, to a part in my life where it's been going on for so long. Cause mm -hmm. you know, when I was in the States, you speak English, but you're not American. Yep. In Tunisia, you're an expat. So you're not like us. So you yep. don't belong in Tunisia. Yep. In yep. Egypt, you speak perfect Egyptian, but you're not Egyptian. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. in France, you speak perfect French, but you're not French. Yep. So where, where are you in the scale of things? So all that was coming together. This is the end of 2019. I'm mm -hmm. panicking, I'm freaking out, I'm falling apart. Uh, and. There's a mindset there that I had for a while that was also, you know, drowning me, mm -hmm. which is I victimized myself. Mm -hmm. I, I saw myself as a victim through all this. I'm like, I'm a victim. You know, this, the world is so cruel. The world is, is, is horrible. Mm -hmm. You know, wh why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the, you, I was setting myself up to fail. That's like what you do to fail. Yep. You know, set yourself mm -hmm. up to, you know, just, so I, I kept on panicking and then this is the last move before the whole world. Um, I said to myself, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to apply for these English speaking jobs and mm -hmm. I'm going to try to break in because I like the BBC and the British culture where we don't care where you come from. Actually, yes. they, they move, they, they're far ahead 
in, in terms of diversity. Mm -hmm. If you have an accent, it's not a problem. It doesn't matter. If you're different, it's not a problem. There is there is racism. Of course there is. It is everywhere. Not flat out, like in Paris. Cause yeah, I mean, for my story to interrupt you. But, yes, uh, with, please do. Um, I mean, with my experience, I mean, when I moved from France to yeah. uh, London, yeah. I mean, from Southern France to London, and I remember what, what my, my English was even worse than now, so you can imagine. Yeah. So uh, I remember being in dailies, as we call it in our industry. Yeah. So yeah, you go in dailies and uh, the, the soups were English. I were English, so yeah. I was barely understanding <laughs> anything. Yeah. So I, I keep saying sorry every two seconds, you know, and sorry, yeah. sorry. And everyone is saying, and I like this saying, is, yeah. your English is better than my French. Yes. So it's, it's in a way saying, yeah, don't worry about your English. At some point, you're going to get there. They will pull you up. Exactly. They wouldn't push you down. Yeah. yeah. It's not the case in France. In no. France, if you have a slightly different accent, they're always trying to, to remind you. Glasses, for instance, or whatever, you go, go and buy a baguette. Vous avez un petit accent. Oui, uh, voilà. <laughs> do you know the thing about the, the, the vous, vous êtes doux, monsieur? Yeah, they're always reminding you. I mean, you. yeah, every 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 now and then, someone is there to <laughs> remind you. <laughs> Even if you've been born in this country yeah. and you've done all your life here, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If you have a slight different accent, and it doesn't belong to, yeah. Or let's say maybe that person, I don't know. I'm not saying ignorant, but let's say doesn't know all the accents of France. Yeah. Maybe I'm coming from a different, uh, like a small Absolutely. village that you never heard of. You and know? actually, you grew up in France. Yeah, you yeah, are French. You know? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, I'm a French Tunisian. Yes. Yeah. So I so, was born and grew up in Corsica. Yeah. Partly, I mean, I, yeah. I lived a little bit in North Africa as well, but still, I mean, I, that's I, even worse because yeah, you are exactly. actually French. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it did not happen to me, but I see it around me. I mean, even yeah. for instance, uh, my mother or my oh, yeah, relatives, absolutely. and uh, even so, my mother. I mean, she she was. Bless her, God bless her. She she was like, she was speaking French very well, but still, I mean, you can feel it. You can. You're feel always reminded that you don't yeah, belong. But it's not the case in London. I mean, in the UK in general, yeah. especially in London, because London is it's it's, a, it's a something else. Yes. but still, it's not the. It's I, not I think it's more of, it's England, London. I wouldn't say England. London I would say is London. More, yeah. is more of a it's melting pot. Like yeah, people yeah, just I mean, come from every <laughs> sort of New you York. You can see it in the uh, Brexit votes. Yes, uh, obviously, <laughs> obviously, but London is sort of. Like, you know, New York-like, but obviously nobody be does it better than New Yorkers because yeah, the course. second you land in New York, you're, you're from there. Yeah. Nobody cares. It's the same in London, actually. Yeah. You, you're called a Londoner, even yeah. if you're not born there. Nobody which cares. Which is you know, Yeah, a Londoner yeah. is someone who lives in London. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if he's English or not. English, no one cares. It doesn't matter. A Parisian, you have to have a baguette under your... your, your <laughs> <laughs> And that, and, and that, your armpit, and, and uh, that Emily in Paris shit. It just ruined it because, yeah, they, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm always saying, and maybe I will do this. Let's let's create a show called Abdullah in Paris. <laughs> I promise you, the first season will be all in the prefecture. Yeah, it's exactly. an, it will be all in the police station trying to yeah. figure out his paperwork situation. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wouldn't be like, oh, this is nice. Oh no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. that's like a you know, an American, a white American perspective of what. Paris would look like. Yeah, you, you, it's like live, living in the, in the in the police station. Yeah, most, yeah, or, or more or less. You'll yeah. be like, yeah, it will be a whole different show. Yeah, exactly. But funny still. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I, I hijacked. Hijack no, please your, don't. We're, yeah. we're we're here to have fun. Um, where where was I? Which part? Yeah. So I said I'm gonna. So at this point, point everything was falling apart. But I didn't want to give up. I don't mm. give up. Mm -hmm. I just I don't. I think I didn't have the right tools to to keep going through this storm. Mm -hmm. So. I said, I'm going to start applying for English speaking jobs to feel value, to make more money, to, to feel appreciated. This career where, you know, Arab speaking journalists are not fighting for their rights. And whenever you push, they pull back. They're like, no, no, we, we, we like it this way. I'm like, you're doing the same job that the other people are doing for three times the money. Yeah. You're actually working longer hours and you're getting paid one fourth. And less appreciated. And less appreciated, you know? And it's just humiliating. And, and th there was no way to change it. So I, thought, I said to myself, you know what? Well, I speak all these three languages. Why do I, don't I like- If you speak more know, than three languages, actually. I, I, I mean, at the time I did. Now, <laughs> yeah, now there's yeah. a fourth language yeah, yeah. added to the, to the, to the equation. <laughs> so many. Um, but then you meet people who speak five and six and you're like, yeah, true. you shrink. <laughs> you're like, oh, oh, and, and I thought I had something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't always brag about it. No, I agree. I agree uh, with you. It depends on who, who you're talking to, I think. <laughs> so, um, 
So yeah, so I started applying for English networks, mm-hmm. and I am somebody who's not scared of failure. I okay. think that's what saves me every time. I just throw myself in the middle of the flame. You know, I, if I don't know how to swim, I'm going to jump in the water first, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to learn how to swim. You know, I'm not afraid of failing. That's, that's the one thing. So I started applying for these networks. I started job hunting. I'm talking to editors. I'm like, I'll come have a coffee. Oh, you're gonna, you, you have 10 minutes? 10 minutes is all I need. Just, just let's, let mm. me just show you my resume mm. and, and just, because for me, I don't believe in emails. Uh, I think I think email is, is, is a point of contact, but you gotta meet people face to face. Makes mm-hmm. Makes a lot of difference. So I apply for these English speaking jobs. One of them, they actually needed somebody. Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, come over for a job interview. Mm-hmm. It was Eurosports. Mm. And, um, and they're like, come over. Let's when, when was that? This was the end of November 2019. Okay. Yeah. So before before COVID. More before less. COVID. Yeah. There was no COVID. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe there was a case or two. Yeah, then, uh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was in China. And was, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, so I go. They, they, they're like, all right, we're, we're going to try you. Mm-hmm. We're going to try you. So, And the one thing that's, that's good about them is that they, they gave me the chance to shadow when you say shadow, I'm, I don't know if people are familiar with that. That means you just walk, you, you spend three or four days mm. next to the people who actually are doing the job. So you're just watching. Mm. All you do is watch. Um, and uh, a friend of mine at the time who actually helped me get the job was in that day, he was doing the shift. Okay. And he just threw me in the middle of it. And I'm like, you <laughs> motherfucker. He's my friend. I, he's a, such a nice lad, by the way. I'm like, you motherfucker. You know, and he just puts me, he's like, okay, so now you're going to write the whole thing. I'm like, write me? And he's like, yeah, you. Just so I wrote, I recorded, and I voiced, and I did the whole thing. And it's like, you know, you can't fall behind. There it's are live. deadlines. And it wasn't, the recording wasn't live, but yeah. like, your bulletin has to be finished within two hours oh, wow. because it's okay. going to air. Yeah, 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 yeah. If it's not sent within two hours, then it's not aired, then yeah, yeah. questions will yeah, be asked. Yeah, of course, of course. Then Makes people, are, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you're going to do this. Wow. And I mean, I, 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 I appreciate that, but I wasn't ready. But me, who's always throwing himself at things, <laughs> like, sure, I'm going to do it. <laughs> did I, I mean, did I fuck up that day? I think I couldn't fuck up worse. Like I couldn't do it worse. Mm -hmm. I messed up big time, big time. And I never freaked out more in my life. And the realization there, I was, I was embarrassed. It was embarrassing. It was such an embarrassing day. The realization was for me, Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they can see it, Yeah, yeah. but me, I'm not ready for this job. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make it two, two or three shifts like this. They're going to be like, thank you. We've given you your chance uh, Mm. another time. Maybe not now. Mm -hmm. So I come back, I'm improving. The second day I'm better, the third day I'm better. Still not the required level. Mm -hmm. And I realized I need time, I need time. I'm gonna get there, but I need time. I'm not gonna make it in in the deadline. Because these are like, there are Americans running this network. Mm. Eurosports is run by Americans. And Americans, they have that. They they, they know if if they see progress, they'll push you. Mm. They they wouldn't pull you down, they'll Mm -hmm. push you up. Mm. So yeah, they, they, they will let me do this for a while. But at one point, they'd be like, this is not for you. So I was freaking out, along with everything that was happening in my life. So that added to the storm. That did not help. So I'm panicking. And I'm like, I'm entering this depressive mode. I'm depressed, but not, it's not a chemical thing. Mm. It's, it's like, it's my, my life. It's situation that I can fix. But I am desperate for a moment. Mm. I am desperate for things to calm down for a second, because... You're in the storm, I can't see, and I'm falling apart. And if there's like a star out there, something that just will help me come out of this, mm-hmm. I, I'm not gonna make it, I'm falling apart. My personal life, it's, it's you know frustrating, mm-hmm. it's dreadful, I just can't do this. So I remember this and it was the most, I mean, I'm not a believer in fate or something, but I'm, I look in the sky and every day before I sleep, I'm like, if the world can just stop for a second, that will be great. I just need the world to just give me a pause Mm. because it's too much. A lot is happening. I mean, bear in mind that with Eurosports, I'm working for other networks. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm, I'm all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's this guy who gets a weird flu in China and the second guy and the third guy. And it's really bad. I I mean, Mm. I'm not going to make it sound like it was, you know, I'm I'm, I'm sure it was horrible. I mean, people died. It's, It's the worst thing, you know. Of course. But, few weeks later the world stops and 
Yes, you asked for it. <laughs> and and we're, we're, we're locked in. And so you're going to have to spend time in your house. And you, there's no pressure. You don't have to go to work. Yeah. You know, and you can just sort your shit out. And for me, I mean, I don't want to sound like, I, I don't want to make it sound like I'm insensitive or like the pandemic was yeah, a great yeah, yeah. thing. No, 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 no. no. It wasn't. It, yeah, yeah. But it worked for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, the pause you asked for. That's exactly what I was looking for. Just a pause. So I realized that I got to, I got to take time and work on myself. I figured that the reason things were falling apart is that I was working hard on the outside, whereas work should have been done inside mm -hmm. here in my head. It's my mindset. Mm -hmm. You cannot go out to the world and hope to succeed as a victim. It's not gonna happen. If, if everything that's bad in your life is everyone else's fault, you're not gonna go anywhere, trust me. And it's a universal rule, whatever you're pursuing. So I get into, and I did this and it was a bit, I, I'm sure it came across with my partner as, as a bit aggressive, but I was desperate and I needed to save myself. You know when the, I love this thing about like when you're, you're, you're taking off in a plane and they're yeah. like giving you the safety procedures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think it's a universal rule that you should think about everywhere in your life. They say, before you help anybody, make sure you put on your oxygen mask for yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't breathe, you can't help, the, you can't help yeah, anybody. Of yeah, it makes sense. So I was like, it's not I, selfishness. It's, uh, it's more actually, it's the, uh, quite the opposite. It's, it's if you save yourself, you will be able to save others. If you're not breathing, yeah. you're not operational to save anybody. Absolutely, yes. So I was suffocating and I needed to focus on myself. So I, I go into the guest room and I lock it. Like, as in, you can't go yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. I'm locked in, you're locked out. That's just because it was the only way for me to block the world. Mm -hmm, I just needed to be in my own head mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, a while. Mm -hmm. So I'm in this room and I'm like, this room is my brain. This room is my mindset. Mm -hmm. I got to reconfigure everything. So I take time. Um, I worked on my professional skills, whatever mm -hmm. that job at Eurosports required, mm -hmm. I was doing it five hours a day. Mm -hmm. I wake up at seven, have my coffee, slow, you know, mm -hmm. slow morning, cause I need slow mornings. <laughs> but from eight to one, I'm doing the whole thing. I'm simulating the whole thing. I'm writing, editing, reading, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm doing it over and over and over just to get up to that pace that's mm -hmm. required at work. Mm -hmm. Cause I just can't go and, and, and fuck up again, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And it's a great opportunity and it's a great place to develop yourself. I worked on my mindset regarding everything else that was happening in my personal life. And I also read a lot of books uh, and I, you know, I entertained myself as well. I worked mm -hmm. out really hard, like working out because I think if you're locked on a place for a couple of weeks, it, it gets to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mental health was important. Yeah, yeah. So I was working out uh, three hours a day. I was entertaining myself, watching fun things, downloading super crazy video games. I think Red Dead Redemption at the time and, and Days Gone and all that. I was, I was, you know, I made it a great time. I made, I made a great time out of it, mm -hmm. all right? It was you basically- took, you, took, you took advantage of that, that pause. I never took advantage of a situation better than that one. Mm -hmm. You know, it was everything I needed. So I was in a, such an appreciative mood. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciated that. I mean, where else in the world? You just look in the sky and you're like, I just need the whole world to stop to for stop. a second. Yeah, yeah, and he yeah. did. For more than a second. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. And again, I, I'm not sure I should be laughing about it. No, it, no, no. But I completely see what, where, you're, where you're coming from. So for you, you were in, let's say, a weird situation. Yeah. And you needed that pause. Yeah. Well, you did not cause it. I can reassure you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you look at the sky and you say, can I have... Like uh, five minutes. Yeah, five minutes or few yeah. seconds or few. Well, <laughs> and <that> a <laughs> few years. <laughs> but I completely see where you're. It's not. Yeah, I mean, you are ap appreciative of that yeah. situation because yeah, I mean, it worked out very well for you. Yeah. But again, you're not. You're not the cause of, no. the, of the pandemic. Obviously, so. <laughs> I think yeah, so. No, of course, no, no, no. I, I, um, I, I totally see where, where you're coming from. Yeah. So I come out of that room. It's like you know. I think you can relate to this. Have you seen Dragon Ball Z? Of course, like, of course. I did, yeah. so my generation, yeah. I think people my generation, yeah, yeah, yeah. they have this room where you like, if, if an enemy is coming within 24 hours, because they're yeah, yeah, interplanetarian yeah. or whatever, they enter this room where time freezes and they can train for years yeah, and come yeah. out stronger. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas outside that room, only 24 hours, 
I come out of that room a different person, mm -hmm. a different mindset. I read so much. I've been through a lot in that room. It's, it felt like, I mean, I'll be exaggerating when I say a lifetime, but it, it felt like a long time of reflection. Mm. Like uh, some sort of, like, pèlerinage, mm. you know? Mm. You know, when you go to the, the Indian River or whatever, yeah, or yeah, Hajj, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a spiritual Pri experience yeah, for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. I come out very different. And uh, from that point on, life just kept getting better. I, w I go to Eurosports, whatever used to take three hours, took 20 minutes. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm flying. I'm having so much fun with it. I look at my um, income and I'm, I go to Eurosports managers and I'm like, you guys have Bundesliga and things like that. Can I just, you know, get my chance there? And they're like, what, you want to direct? I'm like, yeah, but whatever. I just want to watch. And they're like, okay, <laughs> you can go watch. So I start watching. I start talking to the people directing those games and, and they give me contacts of places where I can go commentate those games. Mm. And so that expands your network and I'm commentating games and then I'm directing games and then... That's unbelievable. The, so the, Please do. Wait, wait, wait one second because <laughs> to, we have to put things in, into context. So, very fast, yeah. <laughs> yeah, quickly. I will be... No, I, I am I, being very fast. No, 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 don't worry. Yeah, because <laughs> first of all, you are trying to be... Uh, to direct or to be a commentator, mm -hmm. not in your <laughs> mother tongue. No. <laughs> it's not in your native language. I know. And you never, I think you never lived, if I, my informations are, information are, are, yeah. are, I mean, if I have good information, you never lived, uh, in, uh, I mean, in, a, in an English speaking country. I, I did for a short period. Yeah, but what, six months? I mean, yeah, uh, whatever, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's nothing. No, no, no. But yeah, English is, yeah. It's your third, <laughs> your third language. It is my third yeah, language. So, or even fourth, maybe. So, uh, third. Yeah, so English is your third language. It's yeah. not even, it's not near close your mother tongue language. Yeah. And uh, not all of a sudden, but because of your mindset and yeah. how you took advantage of the, the world uh, post, I mean, the, 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 the pandemic situation. Yeah. So you were able to, yeah, to work on, your, on yourself yeah. and be able to, I mean, to master, because commentating. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> well again, again, people I can do it. I mean, but people uh, take it for granted. I think what really got me to cross all those boundaries, like limits, I wouldn't call yeah. them lim uh, boundaries, but limits, it's like limits, people are yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, an, I'm a Tunisian, I can never be commentating. Yeah, I think yeah, you, yeah. you just don't fear failing, because guess what? I fucked up in commentating as well, but yeah, but, if, but then course. you get better. It's a craft. Yeah, I mean that's how, that's how we that's how we learn. I mean, yeah, you, you never it's, it's impossible to do perfect things from the from as, I mean, absolutely, never would be perfect from the first start. It's impossible. I mean, you have to go little by little and yeah, train and uh, yeah. fail and yes, and of course, m most importantly, in my opinion, if you are surrounded with good people, in my opinion, good people are people who are giving you. Um, not yeah, positive feedback, but in a, in a good sense, like uh, yeah, like not destructive feedbacks. Exactly. Or, yeah, it has to be constructive feedbacks. Actually, yeah, it's something that could help you for for long term. Like uh, they see something, they give you feedback that you know that will yeah. push you up. Not like uh, yeah, I don't like it, but why? Why you don't like it? What's the reason for it? So yeah, I think this is important, but not, that's not the main reason why yeah. you are succeeding. But this, I think, in my opinion, is one of the reasons. Or reasons uh, yeah yeah sorry yeah no there's no sorry we're, we're discussing <laughs> um i don't i don't give an ear i don't listen to people with no legitimate experience of course yeah you know i would not listen to somebody it's like Lionel messi taking feedback from somebody who's playing uh you know outdoors in front of their house like, <laughs> you, you know messi i don't like the way uh, <laughs> okay, thank really, you. <laughs> like i would never i would never dare give feedback to Lionel messi about football of course is Lionel messi exactly yeah and in that same scale i always like in terms of journalism i mm. look to people ahead of me and I, I i'm always looking for feedback but like for people with more experience in life um you know but there's also a self-esteem thing where like not anyone is entitled to tell you who you are or like anything about yourself mm -hmm. you know this is the problem also with social media and yeah this, yeah. this is where people call me a dictator oh, like how dare you close <laughs> comments or like you don't want people to debate with you yeah i don't want people to debate with me because you're not in a legitimate place to of tell course. me anything about myself yeah of course who are you you don't know me yeah, yeah, yeah. so why why do why would i give you that chance you i did will not, not i did not open the door for you i mean yeah uh, even if i'm sharing few things yeah. with you that doesn't mean you own me <laughs> that doesn't mean you can talk about me yeah, and who exactly. i am you know yeah, yeah, yeah. and and people you know choose to sort of um 
those who I shut down on social media sort of go and troll me on their own walls or mm. like do that. I'm perfectly fine with that. You can say whatever you want as long as it's not on my personal space. And um, it doesn't bother me. I don't get my self-esteem. And this is also something I needed to work on um, in, the, in the lockdown because mm. I, I've, let, I've made myself vulnerable to people I care about in my life. And I've let them decide for me who I am. I think that's part of the struggle that I had for years trying to figure out who I am. Mm. Because again, in America, you're not American. In Tunisia, you're not Tunisian. Yeah. In Egypt, so who I am or who am I? I mean, that's, that's a question I struggled with. And uh, at one point, I've let people close to me in my mm. world mm. tell me who I am. Mm. And I think that was a big mistake. And uh, you know, now I know exactly who I am. And, and it's, uh, it's, 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 uh, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. You can't answer that question that easily. I, I know. I mean, I think uh, you can relate to that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Because so for me, as you know, I was born and partly grew up in, in France. Yeah. My parents are from Tunisia. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> at some point in on my life, I think I just already discussed this in, in one of the episodes. Uh, uh, yeah. But yeah. what I meant is you go to Tunisia, not Tunisian. So you have like an identity crisis. Yeah. And you are in France, you don't feel in yeah. French. And I discussed it a little bit as well uh, with the. Uh, relation with death because yeah. for instance in France for some reason if I want to uh, you know die beneath its ground as a Muslim yeah. I, I, would, I would need to go or let's say to a, a Muslim square which is unfortunately it's not available available they're everywhere. not yeah, there yeah. Isn't. I mean in Corsica for instance is there one or not there isn't so okay. I have a friend of mine who passed I mean uh, he passed away passed away at the age of 18 and he never lived in Tunisia. He no, he doesn't he, no, he don't know where where he's. So Tunisia. what happened? They they sent him back to Tunisia. They they buried, buried wow. him in Tunisia. So which for me it's it it shocked me because so the the this this kid 18, 18 years old this kid this kid was born grew up in Corsica and never knew anything about Tunisia except whatever uh, his parents told him. You yeah, know? I think he went there maybe once or twice, which is nothing. It's like you go to Greece for vacation. It's yeah. nothing. Yeah, you no. Know? You can't relate, relate. It's like, I don't know. It's you like, can't relate to Tunisia. Yeah, it's like, exactly. It's like I, I was born and grew up in Corsica and you bury me in, in Canada. Yeah. And you see what I mean? It's I like, absolutely okay, I let get me, it. Uh, let, let me, let, let's send this guy to Canada. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. So yeah. for me, it doesn't make sense. So I grew up, I had some identity crisis growing up. Yeah. But fortunately, at some point I said, I don't have to choose. No. I can be both. I can be French, Tunisian. I can be whatever I want. I mean... I can be, yeah, whatever I want I can be. I'm not British, but I, if I wanted to be, I could be, I could relate to that. Yeah. So I, I could yeah. really understand what you're saying. I think saying. that's the answer eventually, but it doesn't, it doesn't come that easy. I think no. eventually you're like, I'm all of those places. And the, 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 the thing that unlocks that or enables that is to stop caring about what people think of you oh, or yeah. who you are. Like people uh, are not Are gonna, you driving your life or is uh, people yeah. are driving it? That's people the th that's are the not entitled. to ask. People exactly. are not entitled to tell me who I am. No, so that's, for me, that's a boundary. Uh, and, and, and that, uh, so that's why they're calling you a di dictator. Because they, they, you're not let, yeah, letting I, 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 in. I, I but, said my, but I don't feel responsible for what people think about me. No, of course. So I, you can think whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that's, uh, yeah. But like, um, and people, you know, on social media, <laughs> people, uh, my, my ideas or whatever I try to do on social media is... I noticed that when it comes to Tunisians, it doesn't leave them indifferent. Mm. So they're either like with you all the way yeah, 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 yeah. or against you all the way. But I little little you find people. It's like a prophet. Yeah, basically they treat you like a prophet. So it's like in a way. I mean, uh, it's it, either I yeah, like you, like yeah, uh, they adore you, or, or they, they deny they you. They hate your guts. They, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. There is no middle ground, I, unfortunately. I, yeah, yeah, and I'm a bit extreme in my opinion because I'm like I'm not gentle. I'm like. You know, I disagree, but okay. I mean, <laughs> Go ahead. from the outside, maybe you know better. But like, no, I don't know better, but I'm just from my from yeah. my perspective, I don't think I don't think you're you're too extreme because at some point, if you don't shut that door, yeah, yeah, I mean, no, no one will do it for you. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I I know, but I think I think I mean, people think uh, there's when I go back to Tunisia, I'm always mm. it always strikes me how much time people have that they just don't exploit. <laughs> That's unbelievable. There, there's yeah. time and they're just yeah, yeah. doing nothing about it. So they spend it on social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And people troll and commentate and respond and it, it goes forever. I'm like, you guys think I have the energy for that or, or the time for that? 
people are like, you don't have the argument. That's why you blocked me. Man, I have the argument and I have the time. You're just not worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not worth my time. My time is money. I, I mean, you know, if I'm spending my time on something, it's either money or pleasure or rest. I'm either resting yeah. or having fun, yeah, a good yeah, time, yeah, yeah. or I'm working and I'm doing it for money. Of course. Out of those three, it's hard to find me spending my time on, man, look mm. at this. I mean, <laughs> Death, yeah. <laughs> that's going to happen to all yeah, of us. Of course. Yeah. So don't waste so, your time. Sooner or later. Yeah, that's, so, that's going to happen. And what's the story with this guy? Because ah. this is like a, a Jawa and they steal things. And, and yeah, he's, exactly. been, he's been standing next to my phone for a while now. He's, he's, he's going to steal your phone, <laughs> so be careful. <laughs> I would move your phone. <laughs> oh, man. That's a good point. Yeah. But that's a reminder. It's me. That's a reminder for me to say. Yeah, yeah. He's you, pointing a Jedi sword at me. <laughs> <laughs> this yep. is to remind you that I'm I'm still working on visual effects. So you are you yeah. are a VFX man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. <laughs> um, there is a question I would like to ask if you don't mind. So basically, I don't. Uh, so in Tunisia, as you well said, sometimes people not everyone, but uh, sometimes people take things relatively easy or easier, or let's say they feel too comfortable. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, I know that you start working at pretty young age, yeah. which is quite unusual, I would say. 15, I think. Wow, yeah. 15 yeah. years old, it's uh, quite young, especially, uh, I don't know what's your fam family background, but yeah. uh, I'm I think you're coming from middle class uh, family. It's, it's an absolutely normal family. My yeah. father's salary was 800 dinars, which at the time was like 600 euros or mm. something, like that, at the time, right? Yeah. And um, only he worked in the family. My mother decided to stay home. Mm. Um, and 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 we grew up like everybody. So I mean, you could you you did not you you was not a uh, like you. It's not like a, <laughs> no one put a gun on top of on your head and said you have to go to work. You you decided by yourself to go and. I I needed an environment where I can escape. So school you, you was, were not okay. You were not comfortable. Uh, I hated school. Okay. School was a nightmare. This is part of why my main cause on social media, the, the main thing I'm tackling, mm -hmm. is education back mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. School is 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 it feels like prison. Mm -hmm. It's not a fun experience. Mm -hmm. We live in prison for for eighteen years. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot of prison time. My best years, I would say. You know, I, uh, and you learn absolutely nothing, mm -hmm. and it's destroying everything about your character. It's it's destroying creativity. Mm -hmm. It's destroying the joy of life. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm talking about the Tunisian experience, mm -hmm. right? Because people in New York, I don't think they can relate, or people in London, or even here in yeah, France. Yeah, yeah. I see kids going to schools like Jeanine Manuel, you know, where mm -hmm. like the, the sons of Nicolas Sarkozy go. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's a paradise. Like I'll <laughs> I'll just move and live there instead. Of course. Yeah, yeah. So you know everyone can relate to their mm -hmm. own experiences. Tunisian school is an environment that destroys you when you're at your most fragile age mm -hmm. it doesn't give you the chance to grow and so they strip you out of everything mm. and and they give you these blocks that sort of makes you he heavy too heavy to move from one place to another mm -hmm. when i was 14 i was bullied I, bullying has 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 reached levels that i couldn't from whom from the teachers? everybody but mainly the teachers okay yeah. i'm always i've been always challenging teachers mm. i'm always a challenger authority it's challenging challenging in terms of uh, whatever they they they, they present as, mm. as the truth okay. in school yeah, yeah 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 science literature um religion math mm. Mm. i'm always a challenger in terms of like well how do you know that well it's just it just yeah, is of course i'm like well it just is doesn't work for me yeah yeah, yeah. come out here Bah, bah, you get hit <laughs> get wow. back there shut up you know and that's the culture mm. you know so i think I, at the age at the age of 14 i couldn't take it anymore and my dad noticed that and it was like a severe depression i mm. didn't even know i was depressed i stopped mm. going to school as of january i stopped going to school and um yeah so in the middle of the year in the middle of the year okay, and they yeah. didn't know Oh, I, okay, I would just yeah. go out and, and, and play. And, do and they know now? <laughs> I think they do. <laughs> I had fun with my time. I'm like, I'm not going to live like this. And I, I was 14. I'm, yeah. like, I'm not going to live like this. Um, so I just, um, I just 
started going out playing with my friends or whoever I meet in the street because mm. there's back then there was a culture where you just go out and play people mm. now play with video games and tech, yeah, but yeah, back yeah. then we used to yeah. just go out mm. I think we were we are the last generation that played on the streets and inside I mean uh, uh, with I video games so. yeah people just don't go out and play yeah no, not anymore unfortunately I think it's unfortunate in my opinion but of for, course it's, yeah, unfortunate. it's unfortunate how, how would you learn the social skills exactly how, yeah. how do you build a so social network I mean, as a kid, you how know? do you develop? Like, I see, I see, I see my. This is another story, but I see like my nephews and 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 uh, oh, my my cousins. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they're so little. I'm like, no, they're, my, <laughs> no, they're they're actually my cousins from my uncle, um, and they're um, they don't have social skills. They don't yeah. relate in 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 a way that when I was their age, I'm just you know. Um, because yeah, I, I, sorry to interrupt you, yeah. but again, I mean, parents, uh, schools can't teach you everything. I mean, you need. You need street, society, more or less. You need, if in, in a way, yeah. In, you need in a society, positive yeah, way in, around you to teach you other things, yeah. which is, in my opinion, which is more important than everything else. I think so. And yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable. I still don't. I mean, I have eighteen months old uh, yeah. son. Congratulations, <laughs> Adam, little Adam. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. So Adam is yeah. I, if, if I think. For him, on the next, I don't know, ten years, I'm yeah. a little bit worried because yeah, well, <laughs> where, yeah, where he's going to play? <laughs> you should be. Yeah, this yeah, TikTok exactly. generation, there, the, the, the tic, what's it called? TikTok, TikTok, yeah, 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 TikTok. Yeah, yeah. They're like looking at you, and they they they, they, <laughs> they think they can scroll you up and move to the next thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> no, I'm like I'm no. I'm, I feel like I'm, a dish some, some, yeah. sometimes, you know, like you're, you're on the menu. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why aren't mean... you dancing? Where's the music? <laughs> <laughs> And the next one, and, yeah, the, and the next we, one. we will do another episode, but because I, I don't think this one will be enough. Yeah. So when in the in the next one, in the part two, all right, I will be dancing. <laughs> be like, oh, oh. Instant gratification. That's yeah. the worst part that they're teaching them. Unfortunately, like yes. they, and they, they come out to the world thinking that that's how the world works. Yeah, you gotta get it right yeah. away, but it doesn't happen, and you don't have the patience for it, and you're destroyed, and you're depressed, and then they're like, oh wow, we're this generation is depressed, well, obviously, because they thought they're gonna have it right away. Yeah, 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 doesn't work like that. So just to get back to that, yeah, and, and, and I'm gonna yeah. be brief uh, yeah, about it. Sure. No, I, I was just too depressed, and so I, I stopped. And then when my final results came in in, in uh, June, my father was like, "Whoa, <laughs> whoa!" I'm like, "Well, I have. I told you I don't want to go to school, and you didn't listen. Mm -hmm. So I stopped going to school. And that's when my father really saved my life because he's like, "Okay, we gotta treat this because other parents would would do it the easy way, which is beating the hell out of you." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just talked to me. It's easy. It just it's easy. the easier way. It's, it's, it's just, but, Scare you, yeah, throw yeah, you yeah. to that, and like out of fear of getting beaten up again, you go back to school. Yeah, yeah and yeah. I see that. Uh, he was like, well, "What's going on?" I said, "I don't want to do school anymore. I am not doing school." Mm -hmm. And he's like, "Okay, what do you want to do?" I said, "I want to play video games and do it on television." And this is before. YouTubers started doing yeah, yeah, yeah. gaming or whatever. Like 20, they, they, less than more or less twenty years ago. I think twenty. This is two thousand four. Oh, okay, yeah. Where 16, is that? Seventeen years ago. Seventeen years wow. ago. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, it yeah, could yeah, be. Yeah. I mean, you you were Relatively. fourteen. It's already like uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, okay, we'll do that, mm -hmm. and see how you feel when you do that, mm -hmm. and if you feel like going back to school, do. That's amazing. For me, that was already. A huge surprise. Yeah, I expected my dad to beat the shit out of me like every other dad. Yeah, my father would, would, would have done the same. Yeah, <laughs> like, hey, honey, can you get the knives? We have a, a nine twenty one here. Let's deal with this. Um, so he, so yeah, so he's like, okay, write your script, write whatever you want. There was this new network. That's what I thought. It was Hannibal at the time. So uh, Hannibal, it's a private TV it, channel it, it in Tunisia. Tunisia. It was the first, right? It was, it was the, the first, first Tunisian. Uh, the yeah, and it was like time. saying it was like they were they were putting an announcement like if you have a show if you mm. think you're creative mm. we're audition we're auditioning people come over I said I'm, I'm just I want I want to do that mm -hmm. um, so he said okay go for it and he helped me mm -hmm. um, and he pushed me and by the time I did it I was already so happy I'm like school doesn't matter now I can just go and do it it's 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 gonna become such a secondary thing you know and I just went and did it. And I couldn't care anymore. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and bizarrely, my results got so much better. Yeah. Because there was no pressure. I am not scared. And I, I don't know if this is good or bad, but I figured out I'm just going to write whatever they want me to write. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to take that creative process and all the things I love about myself mm -hmm. and do them in the television world mm. and keep developing those 
in that world. Instead of doing it at school. And in school, I'm just gonna be, I'm just gonna play along. Mm. I'm gonna play the game. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure that's a good thing, but it helped me survive. It helped me survive. And I did survive school and I continued and I was good at it. And my back was excellent. And, um, but my television career kept on growing. Mm. By the time I was in college, I've already had a pretty respectful resume that mm -hmm. attracted the BBC. Wow. So, so this is how you moved from Tunisia, actually. Yeah, yeah, was yeah. right after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want me? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. What, uh, yeah. So you, so you, you started. So your, what was your first uh, TV show in Tunisia? Very light. Very light was like. Was uh, called very light. It was called very light because uh, it was very light, okay. or that's, or so they thought. <laughs> okay. Compared to what they do now in Tunisia, it was super light and okay. super nice. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a table with But it was not a idiots. sport because no, you're, so what we you're do, now, now specialized in, not only, in may, among other yeah. things, but in sports. I but, do sports here more than any other thing. But back then it was not about sports. It wasn't. So you would host, I was 15, you would host, um, you would host like, um, you know, important characters, p figures, oh, okay. famous people. Could be uh, actors, could be... Yeah, but at the time, you know, before the revolution, those people were real. Like, actors were actual actors, not idiots like you see today. Yeah. Or <laughs> athletes were actual athletes, <laughs> not like the post-revolution Tunisia that we're seeing it's, today. It's, it's which an, is, it's unfortunate and a shame. It's a shame because you, you would think the opposite, actually. You would think after the revolution, things would, would change it's, differently, it's, but uh, yeah. yeah. But the, I agree with you on that. And it, was, it, was, it was a different on time. On this point. Yeah. It was a different time. Um, so, and you would host these people and then uh, you, you would do activities with them. Mm. It's sort of like what, what Conan O'Brien used to do, like take people out for- Oh, wow, okay. So we would just go out, yeah, we yeah, go to, yeah, yeah. like there was an episode in the desert on the quads, there was an episode with like p shooting, we were doing parachutes. Oh, wow. Yeah, there was a camping episode. And, okay. and you would host people like Minister of Sports, mm. like um, uh, actors, you know, people who were just famous at the time, but mm. I was 15. Wow, and that's, just, inc that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm sure you don't realize that, but- uh, I think it was, it was Shihab Risi who was the producer at the time. It was a small bet because if you put a 15 year old and you let him do this and he can do it, mm -hmm. people will be like, who the fuck is this kid? Mm. Why did you, like, I'm just gonna watch this. Who the fuck is it? They yeah. put a 15 year old on this. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna get people curious. It's a huge gamble actually. From, it it from, was a gamble. From, uh, from your producer side. But it worked. There yeah, no, sponsors came and, and it was- amazing. Yeah, it was wonderful. That's amazing. So you can see when you're doing an episode like that, and the next day you have school, like, who cares? But was you famous at some point? So it, it, can, can you're like uh, yeah, there was a little, there was you. a little glimpse of fame in the high school. Ah, yeah, okay, like, yeah, yeah. Obviously, people from the school, all of them saw it, mm. and so you turn from this bullied geek mm. to this. Oh, it's it's a, it's the TV guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that changes people's attitude towards you. Everyone is being nice, but in a phony way. <laughs> and that teaches you something about life. Yeah, yeah. When you're in a certain position in life, people would be nice to you, but not because of who you are. And so how do you relate to those interactions? I think that was a great lesson quite early in life. Well, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm so proud of you just by hearing yeah. that, that, because it's, it's so... First of all, it's so unusual. Well, I start working pretty early, actually, yeah. but not in something. I start like, in Corsica back then because yeah, yeah but because it's a touristic place. Yeah. So in summertime, I was watching washing dishes in the restaurants. Oh, why? I, I loved it. I loved it because for me it was like an escape. So I was able because my my parents were super conservative. So yeah, I was not able to go out. I mean, at night, at night yeah. time. So the best way <laughs> to escape that I was working. Yeah. And I was, of course, lying, and I said, yeah, my shift finishes at one in the oh, morning. Oh, and you just lived. Yeah, your... yeah. so I finish, my shift finishes at 10, yeah. 10 p.m., <laughs> and then I escape, I go and take, uh, you know. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's the way, how, this is how I escaped. It's, yeah. It's uh, less ambitious than yours. But... I think it's the typical, listen, there's no ambition there, like, yeah, yeah. whether it's me or you, it's, it's the things we do when we're kids, not yeah, a exactly, yeah, yeah. You so know. That's, what, that's the way for me to, to escape a little bit of... Uh, what uh, age were you? I was 14, 15. I was not even allowed to work, actually. Oh, okay. Because in France, it's 16. You the oh, minimum right. age to... I mean, you could. You could. Yeah. I mean, I had a, like some letter from my father saying, yeah, he can work. Oh, yeah. It's not called work. It's called he can give a hand or help. You know? <laughs> but I was not helping. I was properly working. Yeah. You know? Were, you, were you getting paid at least? Yeah. yeah okay, good. Paid, that matters. I was paid, man. I was paid 1,000 oh, euros. Back that's then. a lot of money for actually, a 14. When I, yeah. When I, actually, when I started, it was not even euro. 
It, it was Frank. It was Frank. French Frank. I was, I don't know, but it was the equivalent of yeah, one thousand euros or something. What did you do I with it? I was like Pixel, you know the the Donald. Donald oh my God! Duck. You're swimming in money. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a lot of so chocolate was, and candy. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. So I was throwing my money on top of the bed, and I was jumping like a like a crazy guy. So what did you do with it? Like, did you did you buy something big or like what did you do? Well, I I bought a lot of clothes and uh, and I think I, once I bought. I think I bought the Prada shoes or something like that. Yeah, and you, my, my, you, you my bought, father killed me. <laughs> you bought fur and, and bling blings. No, no, not bling bling. I, I was a, a black, super dark. Uh, you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was super dark uh, shoes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's what I bought actually. It was super expensive. Was your father like, "Hey, honey, we have a three thirty-six here. Can you bring the big, you know?" No, he just no, 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 no. no. He was super upset. Yeah. But uh, he he was telling me, "Do you know that the shoes cost more than my car?" <laughs> 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 oh my god so yeah I, I that's the first year but then then i start saving well you learn that's, yeah of course this is it yeah. again failure that's so, again yeah it's important that's super important and yeah. uh, that's why what that's what i love about you suppose sorry yeah no go ahead yeah no you're supposed to fuck up in those years of that's, course. that's how mean, you learn when you when you're gonna fuck up then i again yeah if, I, I, you, if you fuck it up 50 well it depends what you uh, yeah <laughs> but if you like if, if you're not good with like yeah but if you're still washing dishes at 50 and some people i know some people can 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 be going through that but yeah no 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 i mean if you like to do it then fine no, no problem uh, yeah yeah it's but like but... it's it's you gotta it's it's the pressure free time like until yeah. 23 24 maybe yeah, 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 yeah. it's the pressure free time it's it's actually the time to go and fuck up job interviews and and mess of up course. this and mess up that because then you learn because yeah, yeah, when you're yeah, yeah. 27 28 you don't want to be fucking up at that level no it's too late yeah i mean it's not too late look we never know i mean each each person ca is coming from a different background or perspective mm. or mm. way of living some people are coming from yeah different background yeah actually so it's very hard to let's it's, it's not it's not like a schemey and say okay yeah it's gonna let's do a plan and it's, no it's not it's not gonna adapt to everyone it's gonna be Everyone it's, has a, their yeah, own pace. It's, it's a different scenario. It's like characters in four movies. It's a, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a completely different thing. There's no rule to the thing. Yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't feel like, oh, my friend uh, made it by the age of 25 and uh, and I'm 25 and I haven't made it yet. The, that makes me such a you know loser. That doesn't. I mean, no, 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 everyone no, no, has no. their own pace. You know, of course. Um, Sebastian Vettel became, this is sports. Yeah, Sebastian yeah, Vettel became F1. the youngest world champion yeah. at 21, but then he won four. four Lewis Hamilton it took him a lot more time longer yeah. but now he's a seven heading into his eighth world championship so almost double the championships that sebastian vettel have yeah yeah, yeah. but like it just everyone has their own pace to be yeah, ready I, yeah uh, it's, it's, that's completely true yeah. i mean you, you never know and for instance now red bull are trying to push Mar max Verstappen mm -hmm. uh, to, to have the, his championship yeah. i mean to be the youngest yeah. again because it was i think it was with red bull right yeah uh, if he doesn't do it this year i think he, he's not going to be the youngest yeah exactly yeah. i think he's close uh so so there's a race that should start in like uh, i don't know we're filming the day of the race uh the funny <laughs> thing is and this is my my insight, and maybe by the time you air this, the championship would have been sealed. But yes, I, I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I predict, and I could be wrong. Yeah. From what I'm seeing, let's I do predict, let's do, let's do a bit. <laughs> I predict Lewis Hamilton to win, and here's really? why. And and now so there's a race that's that's gonna start Qatar's race that's gonna start in yeah, an hour. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Verstappen has all the qualities to become the world champion, mm -hmm. but he's young, mm -hmm. he's a rookie, mm. and he's hot headed. And in that last mile where things, are this, you know, there are things at the stake and, and the, the stakes are high mm -hmm. and you got to calm down and not let the adrenaline get into your head. Mm. Lewis Hamilton has been there and he's done that and he knows how to keep calm. Mm. Last race in Brazil, he started from the last position. He ended up winning the race. Yeah, true. With the yeah, calm, yeah, yeah, yeah. with the zen, with the experience. experience yeah. He doesn't panic when, mm -hmm. when things are on the line. He, he pulls himself together. Max Verstappen, yesterday, they were doing the, the cues, mm. and he was having this great lap to qualify first, mm. okay? Lewis Hamilton already crossed the line. He's first. Mm -hmm. You got to run faster to cross the line and come first. Otherwise, you're going to end up second. And somebody has an accident, and so there's a yellow flag. When it's a yellow flag, everything stops. Mm. And Max Verstappen, they told him, you have a yellow flag, so stop your lap. Mm -hmm. Everything is finished. You're going to start second. Mm -hmm. Accept it. Deal with it. He kept on pacing. He kept on pacing and racing. And he didn't slow down, which endangers everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he ended up with a warning and a five penalty position grid. Mm -hmm. So he took a penalty for being hot-headed. That's going to really affect the championship today and then in the next rounds. Um, experience is important. Of course. And, and having that composure 
just being composed and, and mindset, mindset again. again yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I totally agree with you. Um, if we if we're on sports, part of the things I sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, part no. of the things I, I saw during the 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 the, co the confinement that helped me sort of set up my mindset was the Last Dance, which came during. Oh yeah, yeah. that was the, amazing. The, obviously, it was it was a huge documentary. That's amazing. And, I mean, I, first of all, before yeah, you, you go, go ahead. on, what strikes me is the control that Michael Jordan have in his image. Yeah, because all those footage was there for like I don't know for 30 years, years and I'm, no one talked about it. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. He planned everything. He planned it. And yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. And this and, is and, unbelievable. How and how Michael Jordan sort of put himself like ah oh, Michael Jordan. All right, he he edited the whole thing. He of was, course, he did. so he's like ah oh, Michael Jordan. But let me tell you something. Yeah, only Michael Jordan can do that and get away with it. That's some yeah true. He can true. Michael Jordan the shit out of the yeah. documentary. <laughs> there is a reason why we use Michael Jordan to say somebody is excellent. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, you're yeah. the Michael Jordan of this or the. Michael yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know what? He can get away with it. If you watch the thing, you're like, yeah. No, you know, I loved it. I mean, it's a very nice documentary. A series my of documentary. favorite part that sort of helped me reset everything. Yep. And this is we go back to the idea of of being a victim. Yeah. This is what they did facing the Det Detroit Pistons. They had a series of constant confrontation. At one point, they were the two best teams in the NBA, mm -hmm. and that meant meeting late in the season for the championship. In 88, they play the semifinals of the NBA, mm -hmm. and the Chicago Bulls were up and coming. Mm -hmm. They were on a going up curve, mm -hmm. and the Detroit, Detroit Pistons were already there, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. um, the Chicago Bulls play well to a point that puts the Pistons in a difficult position. Mm -hmm. So the Pistons start doing this thing where they're hitting under the belly, punches, elbows, knees, just they will take you down. You're up in the air, they will just take you down. Mm -hmm. And they were hurting everybody. Mm -hmm. And the Chicago Bulls complained and were like, what the hell is going on? They're beating the hell out of us and this is illegal. The laws at the time did not protect them. So they lost mm -hmm. and they were out of the game mentally. And they were like, ah, oh, they, they, that was unfair. They, and they fell into that victim mm. mindset. Mm. The, the next year, they come back, they're even more skilled, 89. They're more skilled. And the Detroit Pistons, right ahead, they start beating, they start provoking, they start punching. Michael Jordan is out of the game in his head. He's pissed. Everyone is pissed. They lose. Mm -hmm. They come back the third year, and there's one choice to make. You're either going to bitch about it and lose, mm -hmm. or you're going to figure out that to win this, not only you gotta, you got to be the best at the game, which the Chicago Bulls were, mm -hmm. but you have to be willing to take the hits. Of course. You have to train to take those punches because you know what? No one is going to step in and no one is going to help you. Mm -hmm. That's the way it is. Mm -hmm. You want to beat the Pistons? Stay in the game. Mm -hmm. When they're punching you in the face, when life hits you, because life is difficult and that's how life works. Yeah. When you take the hits, keep going. Get up and go. And that's exactly what they what they did. They were taking the punches. They, they were taking the elbows. They stayed in the game. Their minds in the game. Their eyes on the on the basket. And they beat the head. They sweep them. They beat the hell out of them. That by game four, eight seconds to the to the end, the Pistons left the court. They were the Pistons were out of the game because they're like, we're beating them and it's not working. So that's the mindset. I mean, I think in life, be ready to take the hits. Yeah. You go out and you're like, oh, I'm working hard, but it's not working because you're not ready for the hits. When life punches you, you're like, oh, oh, that hurts. Well, hell yeah, it does hurt. Yeah, I think that's the problem of our generation, actually, because uh, in my opinion, it's yeah. our, our generation doesn't accept criticism in a good way sometimes. Yeah. Or maybe, yeah, maybe we are less sensitive, but the future generations, maybe because of social media, or I don't yeah. know what's the reason, but they, you feel like, uh, yeah, they are like um, playing, playing uh, defensive, defensive yeah. way. Like, oh, okay, yeah, we're trying to. I mean, I'm not trying to offend you. I'm uh, offend you. Sorry, I'm just trying to, you know, to advise if I can. You can, you can take it or don't. I mean, you can either take it or not. But uh, yeah, that's. I think that's my problem with this generation, at least ours, which are super sensitive to crit criticism, good criticism again, yeah, Constru constructive criticism. I mean, yeah, I don't, um, I can't talk about that like uh, in, in, in a general sense because, you know, you have to have the stats and all that. I mean, oh, of course. I have like, yeah, the, yeah, no, th that's well, my, that's yeah, the way yeah, I mean, your, your my experience. Feeling, my I, feeling. I have, I yeah. have quite the similar experience, although I learned like not to get into people's life. I, you know, when we talk about 
uh, reaching your dreams and and, and I'm and, not necessarily and, sorry not yeah. A, yeah I have to be more precise sorry I'm not talking about your dreams no For no since I'm talking about my job VFX and someone yeah. is coming into the industry oh they they're, they're coming for yeah, feedback exactly and yeah. they're coming for feedback and you say better we do it like this that this is my opinion you don't have yeah. to take it but if you're asking for advice I mean this is this is a I mean this is how it should be yeah this is how it should be based on my experience yeah etc etc so sometimes unfortunately in my opinion a lot of people especially a, a lot of people reaching out uh, to me from Africa or North Africa yeah. mainly and some of them get to some point I mean they let's say yeah let's let's go yeah. ahead and uh, let's try to I'm not saying I'm not everything I'm saying is right no what I'm saying is based on my experience this is more or less how it works because as every industry everything evolves yeah and the evolvement could be like dramatic you know sometimes yeah. in a five years boom sure. change, changing everything changes so that's what well, that, that's what I meant Sorry, that's why. I no, no, I, I think, I think, well, yeah, it's, I, I, I understood your point, and, uh, but I just, I sort of learned that people just would get defensive no matter what. Yeah. Like if you, if you attack them, if you, if they feel attacked, and you're not necessarily doing that, but no, that's like, what, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just, your, your intention is to say this is how you can do it better, and mm. people just hear it like, oh, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. suck at something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, only a few times in my life did I like, sort of got aggressive with somebody because they were messing up their life mm. so big. Uh, now I sound like Trump. So big, they mess up their lives. So big, <laughs> big so time, new, big time. Um, but like, um, I remember doing that once or twice. But it was only because I saw them heading into the mm. final result, which will be against everything they want. And I get a little bit aggressive. I don't regret it, but like, it's it's your last wake up call. After that, I'm not like, I'm not responsible for anything because mm. if you're gonna come to me, because these are people sort of they 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 come for help over and over and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah and I'm yeah. like. All right, but you're not doing anything about it. Yeah. You don't have the tools. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you you have two choices. Either you radically you get into that room mm -hmm. and work on your mindset mm -hmm. or you accept that you're not going to get it. You mm -hmm. accept that you're not going to be there where you want to be in in your life. Um but I also I also like if somebody doesn't come to you for feedback, mm -hmm. I I don't give it. Like I can see people going the messing up yeah, yeah, yeah especially in uh, obviously i'm talking about things that i know really well right like my profession or yeah. like experiences that i've been through myself and um if i see you heading into the cliff yeah and you you, you don't ask me you don't say to me like uh wh where am i going where does it lead from here i, I wouldn't i just i will let you go because i think if you fall you learn a lot about yourself oh definitely yeah, yeah sometimes yes and then you remind them a bit, not not to be like. Uh, I, don't, I don't even do the "I told you so" thing. I'm like, no, no, yeah. no, it's not, not about this. It's more to an, an analysis yeah. uh, way. No, yeah. okay, look, you did this, that. You you could have pre prevented this. You could have done yeah. it differently. I mean, we we could be. Yeah, everyone could be an anal analysis in, yeah. uh, in, in, in a way, but it's not. A, I I see I see what I see what, I see your point. It's not yeah. a good idea, but still, I mean, um, just to. To, to see the, the whole picture, the over, yeah. overall thing, and move on from there. It's like something else as well. Uh, for instance, in my opinion, people now doesn't um, recognize their biases or prejudice yeah. from previously. For instance, Malcolm X. Malcolm yeah. X would, see, would say, um, uh, yeah, he, he would say, for instance, um, um, white men white men and women are devils. Yeah. And he believed it. He believed that. Yeah. And then he said, I changed my mind. Uh, white women and men have two devilish behavior, which is true. We are, have, we all have, yeah. not only white men and women. So, so there is people at some point, in my, in my opinion, yeah. that were able to change their mind and stick to the, what they did before. I mean, yeah. not necessarily stick on it, but, um, yeah, change change my mind. If they biased uh, uh, position, which I don't see nowadays, unfortunately. I mean, you have to be ready or willing to, right? This is a much bigger conversation, but it like is. you know, I <laughs> it's just an no, no, but it's important. Up. I mean, yeah. we, we have the time. It, it's um, when you grow up in an environment and you're about to sort of um, travel to a different environment or sort of experience something different. Mm. All right, you got to be willing to change mm -hmm. and change your perspective of things and know that whatever you learn is not the absolute truth yeah. if if any mm -hmm. if any you know and you didn't grow up in tunisia but i'm sure you're familiar with the tunisian culture yeah, yeah, in yeah, a yeah. sense that 
everyone outside Tunisia is the devil and that's the culture you grew up with everything yes. everything again the v- being a victim, victim. and yeah, blaming yeah, yeah. everybody else for what's wrong in, yeah. in your country and mm-hmm. it's a similar culture in Egypt where you know everything is 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 um Jews are responsible for everything that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. bad in the world you know yeah, that's yeah, yeah. it's such an anti-semitic uh, culture and, yeah, yeah. and people will just put that in your mind mm. and then the west the west the west always like of course the west hates tunisia and that's mm. where they you know, like, it's like uh, when you go to america people are like w- w- what is wh- where, where is, is it tu- what's tunisia <laughs> yeah. I, I, there was somebody who was like not even where it was like what what is tunisia again yeah, yeah, yeah. so no there is another thing that i sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. why are you were not black yeah, yeah or yeah. you're not hunting lions or <laughs> yeah. whatever they don't know we exist they don't know exactly they don't know yeah, we yeah. exist so you go out and you got to be willing to 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 see the world differently you you would learn that the other is not the enemy you will get less xenophobic mm-hmm. if there is something wrong or a conflict mm-hmm. you'll start seeing it in a rational way mm-hmm. you know i don't want to get into the israeli palestinian but, yeah, yeah. but like once i left tunisia i had a different perspective on things and i learned more and i got into the process of you got to read you got to read you got to know people from from both sides you know and it doesn't matter like i'm not getting into the point of like who's doing what but mm. like you have a much wider perspective that's less emotional and more rational and that's that's very important in life yeah so um yeah i mean the, to go back to your malcolm x quote i think i think you know it, you got to always be willing to to evolve and change your perspective yes because as we grow up or evolve in time we hope so yeah we don't yeah. necessarily do that you see things from a different perspective because the effect uh, of everything around you yeah uh, everything around you affects you in a certain way so i think in my opinion could change your mind you might be right i mean all along but at some point maybe you're not especially yeah. when you this is a racist 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 quote more or less because for some people for i instance, mean yes eventually Mal- yeah it is. malcolm is for some some people he's He's a black supremacist. He was some uh, to to a certain extreme. Yeah. He wasn't. He wasn't uh, Muhammad Ali. He wasn't yeah, exactly. Martin Luther. Yeah, but um, for others, he's he's a semi god or god. Yeah, I mean, he's, yeah. So again, that's uh, it depends from which perspective you are seeing it. But now we can not judge history, but we can see it from from uh, yeah twenty first century perspective, just to see if we can. Because of course, Malcolm X is super important to uh, yeah, human he's, history. He's part of human history. Yeah, and. I mean, uh, whatever he did, he affected our life. We like it or not. He affected history, so he affected our our life. Yeah. We like it or not. So we we don't we're not necessarily judging judging it, but we can see where he's coming from and how he evolved. Yeah. He evolved. Although funny enough, I mean, not funny, but like tragic enough, I would say that the United States is still right where Malcolm X and Martin Luther King did started. Not change, in my you opinion, know, yeah. right? Like, yeah, no, no. it's 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 phenomenal. No, that's true. Actually, it yeah. did not change. Uh, like <laughs> the fights are still the same. <laughs> it's the same. You know. Yeah, they said they they're not like yeah. There is no separation between races. Races, I would say, it but couldn't it's be not, more racist. It, yeah, you go to super. America, and it couldn't be. It couldn't get more racist. Um, yeah, that's. I totally agree with you. Yeah. on that. Master Firas. Master. Yeah, you're What's, a master. I'm, a, I'm a, you're mastering many skins. Oh. <laughs> Look at me. I, I, I got it. I, got, I figured it out. <laughs> you will not steal my phone. <laughs> yes, still trying. yes, man. I don't have a bar news. Now, yes, <laughs> yesterday when we had coffee, you brought to my attention that the de- Jedi's traditional clothing is yes. actually Tunisian. It is. Because that's exactly Tunisian. what we wear. Yes, we are. And I never made the link. And the tro- troglodyte uh, uh, caves as well, they're ours. Yeah, I mean, I know that. The, Thank the, you very much. No, no, I know that the <laughs> whole George location. Lucas, George Lucas. <laughs> George Lucas. I mean, Tatooine is the state, the southern state in Tunisia. Yes, Tatooine is just changing a little bit the and, name. Yes. And those homes do actually exist. People they live do. underground. They do. It's, it's been there for 3,000 years. and But the people wear those clothes. True. The Jedi clothes. I can't do any movie about so Jedi. We're, about we're, actually, we're actually the real Jedis. We are. We're we the are. Jedis. Yeah, we are. <laughs> In the sense, we are actually. Cool. Yeah, so thank you very much, George Lucas, for that. I love that. <laughs> and Tarek Ammar as well, because yeah, uh, he I think it. without him, we won't be able to... This is what I mean when I say back then... Filmmakers were actually filmmakers before the revolution in Tunisia. Tarek Ben Ammar, I mean, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Michael Jackson's history yeah, concert yeah, yeah. that he brought to Tunisia in Almanza, where there was no Qatar, there was no Dubai, there was yeah. none of that back then. Here you go. You're don't, no, no, you're, yeah. no, but like there was, there was, we had, we had something. You know, I don't want to be like living in the past. No, 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 no. But 
you know, we grew up in a country、mm. where we had. When a, was Michael Jackson? 1996? 96, I yeah, think. Yeah, 96, I think. Yeah. Like Tunisia used to host all these. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And now it's yeah, different. Ka- Ka- Katha sh- Theater was amazing. Are you kidding me? Huge. I mean, one of the best in the world, I can say that. But it was, now, it, it was now a different it's, time. It's,、uh, yeah, it was yeah. a different Anyways, time. Since you, you br- bring up Qatar and、uh, yeah. all the Gulf, Gulf Persic countries, does、yeah. it bother you when you see three countries owning Premier League? Uh, uh, clubs. Are we talking football now? Yeah. <laughs>、um, I am not. I am not part of the Premier League. You know, it's not my decision to make. So it it wouldn't no, get no, to a point where it bothers me. But it is. A, it is something that that we need to not, re- not necessarily to reflect. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Because I think Russia, not Russia. Yeah. But、uh, yeah, Abramovic、well, is owning Chelsea. He's Russian, and apparently people say maybe it's. Yeah, is Russia who's owning the? the, the There is a lot of. And I'm not, I don't know、yeah. actually because I, I I'm an ignorant, so that's yeah, why I'm I, asking. I, I'm、it. not like I mean I know you know I don't know more than the things you read in the press because that's what where、yeah. I you know, but、um, I think football in many ways is used to money launder、mm-hmm. for 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 money laundering and also it's helping. It's a PR thing that、mm-hmm. certain countries are doing to to clear themselves yeah, of out、course. of certain things,、mm-hmm. uh, human right, you know, human right issues and and these regimes that so are. So it doesn't matter. Um, it does matter. It absolutely does matter. If it, the West, I think the West, is is letting go, and this is in a much bigger sense. They're letting go a lot of their values、mm. for money yeah, these yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how they managed to beat communism by injecting money there, and that's how their values are getting killed by injecting money into them. But th- does、uh, does communism still exist? I'm not it sure, does, but, but I mean, it, not in the sense where it was like a force, like a force that dominated the world. Yeah, because、uh, I mean, from, from but me, China is coming back. So, yeah, but it's not communism. They're not. They're not. They're, the economic system. It's. It's not. They're not communist. Everyone is a. Con- everyone is a capitalist. Just、yeah,、like、that's, that's the thing. That's the rule. Everyone is. Yeah, exactly. Be, r- political regimes or regimes that are just—they can pretend、that's、to、true. be something else. Yeah, I see. Everyone,、yep. capitalism、mm. is the human nature. It is. I agree with that. Anything else、mm. is not human nature. Yeah, yeah. But for instance, I, I like a lot, and sometimes、I、talk about the、um, Scandinavian countries. Yeah, it's their their capitalist con- the economic economic system、yeah. is capitalism, but it's、uh, they are socialist countries. So they managed to they succeeded to find a balance. It's unbelievable. They succeeded love, to find、I、a balance. I love the way how they. Peep the humans treat the their humans. <laughs> I think so. I think anybody would would love that if it wasn't for the long night hours. Oh wow!、Yeah. That's that's where I'll be. You know, I mean, that's unbelievable. If you are if you want to have kids, I think I think Sweden,、that's... for instance, would be the right place to go because paternity leave is two yeah, years. Yeah, or、instance. or the Netherlands, I think. But those yeah, those yeah, countries、true. in general、that's... sort of figured it out. I don't. I won't say. I won't. Yeah, it, that's similar actually in a way. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah, they're pretty similar. Even the、way. languages are not that. The、well, no Swedish. No, I think it's Norway. I'm thinking of Norway, because they speak, or is it the Danish? I don't know because I speak Dutch. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And yeah. one of those countries, and now people are gonna feel like I'm offending them because I'm mixing <laughs> it all together. Sweden, Denmark. I think. Don't worry, we don't have any audience from Scandinavian good, countries. Good, I hope so. <laughs> I think that that、um, Denmark, the the Danish language is not that far from、uh, from the Dutch language, and the、mm. cultures are not, you know, that different. Yeah, makes sense. So yeah, it, it, I don't know if it, this bothers me or not. The fact that countries own. Uh, like cl- football clubs. clubs, and for instance, not only in, in the UK, actually, even in France. I mean, what what hey, bothers you? you? It bothers me, for instance. I don't know what's the difference, for instance, between Marseille of Bernard Tapie and per- Paris of、uh, the Qataris. Oh, all the differences in the world. Yeah, that's the <laughs> I thing. Mean, I mean, <laughs> there's the, there are differences on the pitch, and there are differences off the pitch. Which one do you? Which ones so, do you want? So, <laughs> <laughs> Which <laughs> the shortcut? <laughs> Because I know I could I could talk with you about this for quite some. For there quite there, some there is corruption on both sides. Yeah, I know that. But but Bernard Tapie's team had heart. Paris Saint Germain doesn't, and that's why Bernard Tapie's team won the Champions League and is the、mm. only French team that did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Um, the first and the last. For now, yeah, for now.、Yeah. And PSG will keep coming back, and maybe they will do it eventually. But look at the many times they, they failed. They were close at some point. They keep point. failing, and I'm always sure they would fail. It's not a team at the moment. Do you see? Do you see it as a team? I'm not a football specialist. Yeah, but if you're managing PSG, you're not managing a team. You're managing egos. Yeah, that's you're managing、mm. stars and ego, and who's going to play and who doesn't, and which position you can. And that doesn't allow a manager to to actually apply his tactics and think about. Actually, winning the games and,、mm. and creating a pattern of success 
it's not happening in PSG, mm. and I they they're not they keep not looking at it they keep mm. ignoring that part and they just keep coming back for the champions league every year mm. and they lose again uh and now with with messi neymar and mbappe it's not gonna happen Are you feel you? like i think i don't know if it's too shell too too, too shell that said i mean he, i mean, will i will maybe quote him i'm not 100% yeah. sure of, of uh, if, it, if it was him but i think he said in psg he was feeling like the ministry of uh, sports who uh thomas tuchel uh, at PSG, he yeah. was feeling like a ministry of uh, sports. You're managing egos. He, yeah, you're he, doing politics. The politics. You're doing politics. The last thing you th you can think of as a manager is what's happening on the pitch. Mm. Whereas that is actually your job. Exactly. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is also about work environments where you're not actually focusing on your work, and that's a very toxic thing mm. in any work environment. Mm. You have certain tasks in your job descriptions that you sign the contract for, mm -hmm. and if you're not doing that. That's not that's not gonna go somewhere. You would be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna go well. It's not gonna go well if you're managing other things. Yeah, of course. You yeah, know? you're not you're not focusing on what yeah. you should be focusing yeah. on. Yeah, and that's that's the problem. environment that PSG is providing these days. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, Hit me, tell me. I will. I will. Try, I will try. Uh, so it's making me nervous. I swear. <laughs> I swear. I feel like he moved an inch. He's like now. He's like he is moving, but you don't feel it. My God, you can't feel it. This is scary. <laughs> yeah, Muhammad Ali or Muhammad yeah. Ali, as I'm trying to say it in the, in, the, in American yeah. English way. Yeah, he's is uh, shit talking his opponents. Yeah. How how do you think this affects them mentally? Because we're talking a lot about man mindset today. I think I think when when somebody talks like when these boxers talk about you like I'm gonna beat you I'm gonna yeah, put yeah. you back your mamas whatever yeah, yeah, I yeah. think that that doesn't affect anybody we know what it is but Muhammad Ali wasn't trash talking he was doing poetry <laughs> that's that crazy. scares the hell out of you when you have a, a boxer who's so good and intellect as well yeah, 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 you know yeah, what, how does it go last week I injured a stone murdered a rock <laughs> um, hospitalized a brick yeah. I'm so mean I make medicine sick yeah that's and he's, unbelievable and he's just doing it. Oh my God! You, it's you, you shit your pants. Mm. I think I think Muhammad Ali was uh, was and and Muhammad Ali was the for me not the greatest boxer but the greatest athlete. Yeah, true. So I, agree. I don't think he's the best boxer that ever no, no, did no. The, the the game or you know took a fight to the ring. But it was his fights off the ring yeah, yeah, that made Vietnam, that made him yeah. the best athlete because mm. he used the platform to fight like nobody else fought. Mm -hmm. He used the media. He used the spotlight on him to sort of create yeah. this you know this cause and he's 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 going for it and he's not intimidated and i remember okay. his interviews and i remember everything that ah, man i mean nobody fought for the african-american cause like muhammad ali did mm. and how proud he was the pride he had he would stand tall in your face. That's an attitude that you should carry with you. Not, don't be aggressive in people's faces, but stand tall. Mm. If, you, if people are trying to shame you for something that you are, learn from Muhammad Ali how to face it because nobody did it better. Yeah, of course. He would just be no, in your he's, face. He's unbelievable in many ways. You know, like when this woman came to the restaurant and she was like, we don't save... And then she said the yeah. N-word. We, we don't serve the N-word yeah, 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 yeah. like you. you know? And he was like, well, I don't eat them either. So why don't you just go and just get me my coffee? <laughs> yeah, I have a big question. Oh, do I, do I win a million dollars? I don't have the money. <laughs> okay. It's okay. You can ask it. <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, maybe a potential future career of yours. Uh, is it? Okay. Yeah, what is? I think so. What is? Uh actor career oh no no you're not an actor oh uh, you don't want to talk about it no no i will talk about it no we'll talk about it but it's not no it's not a career it's not something i want is it like a, a hobby then no it wasn't a hobby so i know what you're talking about you, you did some googling um not necessarily and i mean uh, like four years when we met you we oh, already yeah. talked about it a little bit yeah so it wasn't it wasn't i i did it because i i did some really extensive training in acting and it's part of like you know my college degrees in in in, in um, film directing. So mm. so film is always something of of interest. The, the, the whole universe is something I I, I really love. Mm. Um, but the acting thing, I'm there was this, there was like this year or two years when I was in Paris where I I did it for fun, but also I did it to learn mm. uh, because I think our definition of of what an actor is back home is is quite superficial. I mean mm. real yeah. actors. When they play a sick character, 
the next three days they're actually sick. Mm. That's how yeah. deep, that's yeah, how yeah, deep yeah. they go. That's yeah. how they manage to convince they, their brain that mm. they're actually in it, that they're the character. And I've managed to go through that sort of training. And I've I did Cours Florent. I did some some um, uh, stage there. I did um, internships elsewhere. They're not internships. They're actually trainings. Mm. And I went to RADA, the Royal uh, uh, Academy of Na of Arts in oh, yeah. uh, in in. Um, in London, mm. it's, it's where it's where um, Anthony, Anthony Hopkins, Hopkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. got his training, but he did it for years. I did it for like a few days. It's, you took, you're, took, you're taking this seriously. Well, when you when you train, when you when you try to do something, you either do it well or you don't. Like, what's the point if, yeah, if you're gonna just? And and I just it just it teaches you a lot about the human condition and about who you are as a person. I learned more training for acting than I've ever learned from psychology or mm. like seeing a therapist or something. Um, you learn more about yourself, but also you learn more about the human nature, mm -hmm. controlling your personas. We're not just, yeah. we're not one person. We're, no, we're, we're several person, p people in, in one body, you know? And um, and it's magical that you, you learn how to better communicate mm -hmm. with people. And again, it's also part of crafting my English. Yeah. Ah, I yeah. see. Yeah. 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 I mean, so you to improve your English. Obviously. Yeah, I see what you mean. you get to a yeah. point where you know all the words, you know, you know how to say them. Yeah, yeah. But someone will say... Yeah, but you, your intonation, you don't sound like a native. So how do you get that intonation fixed? Mm. You do acting. Mm. And I remember in the, in, the, in the training that I did in RADA uh, in, in London, mm -hmm. it was basically about coloring the lines. Oh, so I see. So somebody would bring okay. a text and we worked with the Queen act uh, cast, mm -hmm. the TV show, The mm. Queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, we had the chance that we, we were working with, with, with the crew, the, the mm. actors, mm -hmm. and they would bring this Shakespearean, Shakespeare text, and Shakespeare was a genius of his time. He just mm. basically said, everything you guys know about English, I'm just going to change it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It, what he, it, he just did it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it came out brilliant mm -hmm. because some people would do that now yeah, and it yeah, just yeah. sounds stupid. Yeah. But when Shakespeare did it, he, he's, he's Shakespeare. He's Nobody the did. Michael Jordan of the language. He's the Michael Jordan of English. Good one, good one. <laughs> we were able to put Michael Jordan everywhere. You can put it everywhere. Um, so he, he did that and... Um, so, so they, 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 they would color the, li the lines and what that means is that they would take the same text, the same monologue, mm -hmm. and they would read it in a sad tone and it would just become the saddest thing. Mm -hmm. And then they would read it in an enthusiastic tone mm -hmm. and it just, it gets a whole other meaning and then they're, they're angry about mm -hmm. it. And then, so they teach you how to inject emotions mm -hmm. into the lines and then you learn about, well, you know what? A huge part of the meaning in anything you want to say is in the way you say it. Mm -hmm. That's how you're very clear, and that's how you deliver. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that taught me a lot. It, you know, I work in communication. I, I'm on TV. I'm on radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it helped me. It helped me craft craft my English and, and, and get better at it. Your English is amazing, by the way. Thank it's you. It's amazing. I, I, for, I mean, <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, 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 it's, so, yeah. it's a craft. Anyways, yeah, it's a craft. Yeah, yeah, Anything yeah. is a craft. You, yeah, you yeah, put yeah. time and energy in it, and you do it right. You get there. Mm -hmm. Anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so I learned a lot, and I met very nice people mm -hmm. throughout the process. Mm -hmm. You're meeting people, you're mm -hmm. learning about them, um, and and there's a lot of things you learn. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. it was it was it was fantastic. It was a, it was a, I, I had a great time mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. So is just another Friday. Yeah. One of your first uh, movies? No. It was one of those short. I did plenty of short films over the course. of oh, It's those. a short movie. Yeah, it's I a short. I thought it was film. a long form one. No, no. Okay, it was, yeah. I mean, what is twenty minutes? It's not a long. No, form. no, I think no. It's, 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 a, a, it's short a short film. movie. No, I did, sorry. I, I did. I did. I did a lot. Resources. I worked. Uh, I, I I wanted to work on different characters mm. and and challenge myself to be something else. And it was part of like the journey in trying to figure out who I am. Because when I play those of characters, course. I am actually those characters. And mm. they, they bring out something in me that perhaps I couldn't reach elsewhere in life. Have you enjoyed it? Um, I did enjoy a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, yeah, I, I, most of it. Yeah, but I also learned a lot. Like mm. there was this uh, French film where <laughs> they, I, they there, are, there, were, there were horrible experiences as well that, mm. that taught me different things. Mm -hmm. Another side of the coin, like where I actually went to... to I was on this film set, huge. Mm. This is a huge production. Okay. And I thought I was, it's a Hollywood production, but okay. ran by French people. <laughs> and I thought I'm going to, maybe this could be something. Okay. I'm not going to become an actor, but yeah, this yeah. is a huge thing. Yeah, yeah. So I auditioned for a cop, mm -hmm. a part. Mm -hmm. It's a part, it's a mm -hmm. speaking part. And mm -hmm. the movie star, I, I can't name anybody, but the yeah, movie yeah. star was going to be in the room interrogating something. And I was going to be the cop in the background. Like, okay. Talk, you piece of, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it was like three, four lines, but it's a huge film. So I go to this film 
And I auditioned and they're like, yeah, we, we want you to play this cop mm. next to this actor. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh my God, I'm going to be in the same room with this, with this guy. Huge Hollywood. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah. And uh, I go on the set on the shooting day and they say my contract is not ready. Already something, the way they put it, already something felt wrong. Mm. I go and they're like, okay, your contract is, 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 is coming, but would you just go dress up? Because the, the actor is coming and we want to get done with the scene. So I go and put on this uniform it's like a SWAT uniform and I'm mm. like yeah, I have a huge gun here and like, ah. look so at it's the, an bicep, American putting movie. the bicep out and yeah and um, they come to me and they're like yeah they look at me and they're like what's your what's your name again it's Firas oh but Firas is not Francis I'm like yeah it is Firas ah oh okay uh, one second. And then they go and talk and they're like, you know what? You're going to be an extra. They come back just with that. Oh, wow. I'm like, what do you mean extra? You're going to be with the criminals. Mm. I'm like, why? And then I go to the room where there are the other two or three cops mm. just to kind of take off my mm. uniform. Mm. And they're like, the whitest of whitest that you can imagine. They couldn't be more white. Mm. They were as white as the stable. Okay. I, I mean, see. I'm joking, but like blonde, yeah, yeah, police yeah. officers, okay. French, you know, I'm like, oh, I did not fit in that room in that sense. I see. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be professional about it. So I'm going to do an extra thing. Let's, let, let, I'm going to mm. do the extra thing. Let's at least do something. I'm, I'm going to do I'm not going home. I'm yeah, not a yeah, loser. Yeah, I'm yeah, not, yeah, not going to go yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I go to this extra room where it's a bunch of people that they got caught and mm. um, they got arrested for drug crimes. Mm-hmm. And they're just, mm. the guy's going to be like going into the room. And, and then he, and then they're like, Three three types, North Africans, mm-hmm. Sub-Saharian, mm-hmm. and Latinos. Mm-hmm. Not one single white person. Wow! From the I mean the criminals, the, yeah, the, the, criminals. the criminals room. Yeah, wow. I'm That's like, this is not France. This is not how things <laughs> happen here. Uh, white people can still be criminal. Of course, and and, and well, it's the and same even Sub-Saharian and North Africans can of be course. can be officers and can be of course. can be cops. Yeah. So I'm like, I call them. I'm like, you guys should fuck off. Yeah. And I just and I just left, but I didn't leave like without. I left in a professional way. No, of but course. I obviously I looked them in the eye and I said, "You guys should fuck off," no, and I left. Yeah. No, that's uh, amazing. And I didn't sh- I didn't shoot. So that was one of the. But I learned that that's the uh, part of the industry and how it works. But I didn't shoot that day. But then there was plenty of pleasant people and plenty of wonderful experiences, mm. and it helps you grow. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I know before I think before get being a journalist. Yeah, you studied directing it was during when I, it was during the time oh okay when i was already working in journalism so yeah, you've, you've been doing, you <laughs> i've been doing everything <laughs> multitasking yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you remind me of my wife because my wife is able to do many things i won't i, I am yeah. not so sh- <laughs> yeah, you get used to it with time yeah. <laughs> that's amazing so you are you do you think you you're gonna have I mean, would you be able to be a director at some point? Or would you like to be a director at some point? I don't think a lot about the future these days. Okay. I don't like, uh, uh, this is what I want to be next. I think, I think about the person I want to be more than anything. And then, and then the rest will come along. But what directing ta- taught you while doing it? I love, my favorite thing about director, directing is um, the ability to put the information without saying it. Mm. Every shot should mean something. Mm. Every shot so, should should tell you something. Mm-hmm. A good director does that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coppola, uh, Steven Spielberg, yeah. uh, they do that. There mm-hmm. isn't one shot that's random there. It's unbelievable. There isn't one object in the shot, just like yeah, what yeah, you're yeah. doing here, which I love. Like There isn't one object here that you did not intend to sort of, including this scary guy. <laughs> I don't know why you're doing that to me. <laughs> I'm trying to scare you. <laughs> you're aware of your shots. You're aware of everything you're trying to say, right? And 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 that's, that's directing. And the most... The, the better you do it, the more attracted I am to the mindset. Mm. And that's what I, when I love doing, you know, directing films, mm. I go for saying something in the shot. And my favorite part is the human emotions mm. when people don't talk. Mm-hmm. Like one of those films that, that people just sort of uh, did not love at all. And I really loved it, especially in the first third or two thirds. It's mm. a recent film, First Man, Ryan oh, Gosling. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um... What's the name of the director? Um, uh, Chazelle. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. so. I think it's Chazelle. I don't, I'm not sure. But like, 
the, the, I'm not sure because I, I, I only seen the film very recently by the yeah, way yeah, yeah. Uh, I, think I, Damien, just, I think it's Damien Ch Ch Chazelle the director of, I just uh, kept First seeing Man. people complaining about it because they didn't I mean I'm not going to say people didn't understand everyone is, is free to interpret the way they want but um, there was so little said if you go to the script I think the script of the film is like four pages mm. there's so little dialogue people mm -hmm. just don't talk mm -hmm. everything is, is being said in yeah, the shots it's a visual movie people look at each other and you know there's an emotion there mm. you, you gotta figure it out mm. you know mm -hmm. he's looking at his kids but he doesn't want to go in the and sit at the table he's mm -hmm. scared of not coming back so he doesn't want to put any give away any promises mm -hmm. uh, I loved the film because I'm like wow this this director is actually respecting my intelligence he thinks I'm a smart guy mm -hmm. he thinks I'm gonna get it so I should rise up to those expectations that's my mindset that's yeah, what yeah, I think yeah, yeah. makes sense but like when you're breaking it down too much like when it's say, being said in the dialogue mm -hmm. you know like one of my the scenes that I really don't love at all and it's kind of ruined like one of my favorite movies which is interstellar mm. like when he's explaining the sphere to him yeah, yeah, in order yeah. to explain it to us but can you imagine you're on a mission to save mankind and you only learn about the sphere and the wormholes as you're approaching one really mm. they didn't teach you that back you know when you were about to take off or something like that and they're, they're, they're sorry they're oh. he's yeah we're getting there it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna happen at the end of, we're gonna fight it's gonna, I, I just don't have my my lightsaber it's gonna happen uh <laughs> So like when you break it down too much for me, you think I'm stupid. And yeah. I, I don't like that. No, I see what you, I see. Yeah. I see. I see exactly your point. Uh, yeah, it's it's like the director is. Uh, yeah, he's he respects your your intellect. Yeah. Yeah, in a yeah. way. So yeah, he said. Uh, I mean, audience. I mean, understand whatever I'm doing. So it yeah. makes complete sense, actually. No, yeah. I totally agree with you uh, uh, on that. Any movies that impacted you growing up? The fucking Lion King. <laughs> I will never forget that experience. <laughs> Seriously. It's my best experience. It was the best thing. Uh, oh, my God. The animated one, 1990. No, the old, the classic yeah, one. Yeah, you, the guys, classic you guys one. messed up the new one. I'll tell you why. <laughs> you worked on it. Yeah. You guys did a marvelous job. And, and credit, you perfected it to a point where it was no longer believable that those characters can, can yeah, talk. Yeah. It's a human, I mean, it's a human story. So when the lion looked like, the line I, I would see in National Geographic, <laughs> then he just can't talk. And it's just like one of my favorite scenes, that, 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 my favorite scene in the film, where um, uh, Rafiki yeah. comes to Simba and is like, it is time. And Simba is like, they, they get in this, this, this formal moment, mm. but Simba's like, nah, get the hell, come here. And they just, he takes him for a hug. That's a human. And of course. They couldn't replicate that. They, there was no hug in the, in the, in the new Lion King. There is. Do you remember? Yeah, there they isn't. couldn't because a real monkey and a real lion <laughs> <laughs> would not do that. It's gonna be tricky. <laughs> but it was a beautiful adventure because it was 1994, and I had no idea what a film theater is. But, ah, you okay? Yeah, you yeah. Saw it in the uh, theaters, yeah, yeah. I yeah. had no idea what a film theater mm. is. My dad said to me, um, "I'm gonna take you to to watch a movie," and I'm like, "We watch movies on TV. Like, where would you? Where would I go to watch a movie?" He's like, "In a movie theater." I'm like. I didn't know what a movie theater was. I didn't, mm. I, I didn't understand the concept. I didn't mm. know that there was a huge screens and you just go and... Mm. <laughs> so I thought, you know, maybe the closest thing I can think of is the school plays. So like, maybe it was just walking, there's a little play and people playing lines, but yeah, how, yeah. how would they look like lines? So that's, that's, that's all that was going in my head when I was five or he takes me to the theater, we get to the ticket, he sits next to me and... And the sunset <laughs> and like the, the, the whole thing was like... I'm like holy shit what's going on <laughs> you know and it takes you that scene is is so powerful it that is. scene like the, the, the and um and then my dad did the sweetest thing i remember this is my sweetest memory of my dad i didn't speak french at the time i didn't mm -hmm. speak anything the film was doubled in french mm -hmm. my dad not only doubled the whole thing live wow okay but he played the characters <laughs> he was doing the voice like, performer oh dad can i go down like, and everyone was like shh, shh. and my dad was like just, I'm translating for my kid. All right, all right. We're not here. We're not here for us. We're here for our kids. <laughs> if you want to watch that film, you have issues. It's, it's for children. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> so he did that whole thing, and um, it was the sweetest thing. And he made me cry when Mufasa died. He's like, father died. Like, yeah, I know. I'm watching it. <laughs> so that was that was a sweet memory, okay. and, and I love the film. Okay, great. Is, do you have a favorite director? I don't know if it's a good question. Uh, I, it doesn't get to a favorite, but also all, obviously what Francis uh, Coppola did with The Godfather 2. Mm -hmm. 
resents with me. It's 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 my favorite film, the second part. I think the first part was genius. Yeah. But, yeah. but the second part had so many challenges that you can't be as good as the first. And they did, and it yeah, was even better. Yeah, yeah. And even for Robert De Niro, it was not even planned. Actually, it was not even planned no. to have a second one. Uh, they, everyone yeah. knew that they would do only one movie. Actually, yeah. but and even Robert second. De Niro to come and play a character it was unbelievable. That, yeah, that, a character that already sort of is set up for you. So you have to play it. And and the guy who played it, Marlon Brando, <laughs> yeah, <it's> won <laughs> the Oscars. <laughs> exactly. Are you gonna really manage to take that on? And he did. He did, and he won. And was, I think he won the best. Uh, yeah, supporting actor, I think, for that. Robert award. De Niro's performance of the original yeah, Godfather is my unbelie- favorite. Unbelievable. Part, yeah. yeah. I think my favorite movie of Coppola is Apocalypse Now. It is. I think he didn't go the wrong music, with music. Yeah. The door. Oh, oh my, my God. God. It's that, phenomenal. That shot is, uh, yeah, the, the, in Vietnam was it's phenomenal. unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is one of the movies that drive me to work in the, in the VFX industry. <laughs> then you guys came, and uh, some people love it, some people don't. But I'm not sure I'm a VFX person. But it's not. I think, in my opinion, yeah, it's a tool as any other tool. Sure. So you're gonna use a camera. You can use I don't know uh, a Canon, a Nikon. You can use a, a specific lens. It's a tool. So it's VFX. In my opinion, is there to help a director tell his story or help director tell his story. But it depends how directors or producers use it. Yeah. I will give you an example. Please. The, the people who did the VFX for Fantastic Four and the people who did the, uh, the VFX for the Jungle Book are the same. same it's the same company, same, same people. Okay? Yeah. But the problem is in Fantastic Four, they had four different directors. That did what? The whole film? Yeah. So basically, it, directors got fired. Uh, oh many, wow! Yeah, okay. Fire so. the director, then another one take over, and wow, that must be that must have nightmare. been a toxic environment. Yeah, where... it was super, super. Yeah, but it's the same people who did the VFX. Almost. I mean, they were sitting next to me. All right. So and you worked point, on that as well? No, I did not work on okay. Fantastic Four. But uh, I mean, people who worked with me on Jungle Book yes. worked on Fantastic Four. So there's the same people. Wow. So is, there is nothing to do with VFX actually? Again, it's like. Yeah, yeah, obviously. It's like, it's a tool. But I see your point, is people are overusing it for yeah. many reasons, which is sometimes it's not justified. For instance, when I, see, when I see a James Bond movie, I like it because I know the VFX used on the movie were used wisely. Not like, okay, right. let's throw some visual because I don't have anything to say. And most of the time when we have issue with VFX is because the director yeah. or the storyteller He's lacking, he's lacking something. There is something missing here, so let's do something. Yeah, let's shut it down. Have you seen the latest James Bond? Not yet. All right. The first eight minutes were the best action for me. I, okay. I think it was the best action sequence I've ever... After that, it's just a, it's just a good movie. But okay. Like, yeah, not yeah. like, you know... The, the best action movie for me so far is uh, the this first and second Jason Bourne. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because yeah. It, was, it changed something. It's, uh, it's, I mean, it's... Because we were coming out from the nineties, yeah. full of uh, you know uh, yeah. action movies, and then all of a sudden, yeah, you have Jason Bourne, and okay, yeah, that's yeah, that's unique. You used to be not anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like one last thing, like you used to be right. Like you watch things and you're like, how the hell did they do it? Now the Matrix 1999, like the 360 shot. You're that's like, unbelievable, yeah. How the fuck? Of course. Yeah, now yeah, yeah. there's Matrix 4 coming, and I'm like, what What am I going to see? Like, what, what's gonna, What's the special uh, thing about it? Uh, yeah, yeah. There was <laughs> a time where those things were, you know. I'm not, I'm not waiting for it. I'm not either. I'm not waiting for I'm yeah. not. I'm waiting for other things. Uh, to be honest, I'm not even waiting for the new Nolan movie. Be- uh, I don't know It's why. over with Nolan, you I think? I don't know. I th- not, no, no, it's not over. He could, be your boss. he could be your boss one day. Careful. Yeah, I don't care. It <laughs> 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 does, doesn't matter. All right. I will move from there. <laughs> All right. Even if he can blacklist me. No, I don't. I like his movie. It's not about yeah. that. It's about... Uh, I think it's time to stop talking about time. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. He's, it's I th- unbelievable. I th- from Memento, Memento was amazing. Yeah. I mean, I like uh, most of his movies. All of them, I would say, except maybe... Tenet? I think I need to go see it again. I, yeah, I didn't like it. For me, it's a James, James Bond movie, more or less. Didn't like any of them. I mean, after Interstellar, I, you lost me at Interstellar. Interstellar was good. And was then, great. Yeah, that's it. That's uh, it. Yeah, Dunkirk was not... Yeah. No. Yeah, it was, was not... I mean, yeah, it's, he's a good director, but I, in my opinion... Oh, he is. We can't. We can't. Like we can't deny that. Uh, you, I don't he's, think one of, he one of, he's one of the best of his generation. I think. I mean, so. especially you know for why? Why? Because I, I, when you compare how he treated comic books, 
with <gasps> what he did with the Batman. Batman. I it was mean, amazing. That was, that it's was, unbelievable. Was... I mean, Marvel would will kill to have to to. No, uh, yeah. They will. There, there are no 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 near no way near that. It's yeah, no. So they, far away. Even DC Comics, the people who worked with him on 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 uh, like when they replicate. I mean, he was an executive producer in Men of Steel, which I thought was okay. Yeah, it was, was okay. It was not my favorite. But once they started doing the Aquaman whatever bullshit, it was just I'm like yeah. it was so boring. I, I want to go uh, home. Yeah. <laughs> this is the same with the it's true i prefer when i when i saw the first justice league yeah i couldn't finish even 10 minutes yeah but then i saw the uh Sider's cut yeah was was more interesting well yeah it was more interesting but still i mean it's uh, more or less like a action movie yeah, like like an action movie. Yeah, yeah. It's, Too much CGI, or you don't want me to see. I hate you this have term. a problem with the term CGI. Too yeah. much. What, what do you call it? CG. CG computer graphics. Okay. Because too, CGI too much CG. for me, for me, it's computer graphic imagery. It's like you are not. We are doing. We are. We are there like monkeys pushing buttons. Which All right. It's not the case. It's, we are it's, spending it discredits hours the work that you do. That's my opinion. So I might people, be right. please I might do wrong. say CG from this day on. <laughs> That, I think so. I, <laughs> I, I think might be right. wrong, but I think, in my opinion, the way we say it, VFX is good yeah. because it's uh, it's it's because in in VFX you have many things. You have two D you have two D departments, three D departments. Yeah. It's, it's a combination of both. But when you say CG, it's mainly three D elements. All right. But when you say VFX, you are talking about the whole industry, more or less. Cool. So yeah, sorry, but that is my opinion again. I will, I will, I will be like mean, that. Doesn't mean I'm, I'm at right. At least around you, I'll make sure I say CG. <laughs> Next time you call me, you say. <laughs> um, I think, I think that's it. Yeah. All right, yeah. good. I had a uh, wonderful moment. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. I mean, look, I, I'm, man, I'm uh, learning so much from you from your videos. I know, unfortunately, our English speaking audience doesn't know anything about your Tunisian. Uh, videos or Tunisian talk I mean the Tunisian where you're talking about in Tunisian in yeah in Arabic or Tunisian they are amazing they are I appreciate it I think yeah in people in, in, in Africa in general need need people like leaders like you that yeah at least we, we can they can see themselves on someone or yeah thank you I you are you are an inspiration and I really appreciate appreciate the time you took to come and come over. Yeah, and, uh, that that warms my, warms my heart, and uh, it's, it's funny that you say warms my heart in in English, but you say asleja <laughs> sadri in Arabic, <laughs> yeah. which is the total opposite. Yeah, opposite. It, it froze my heart. That's what you say. Yeah, when you One grow up in the desert, you desert know. culture versus <laughs> that, that that warms my heart, and and uh, it's my honor and pleasure. I wish you nothing but the best. I see this podcast going somewhere, so keep doing it. Thank you, and <laughs> I appreciate you driving all the way from London to Paris <laughs> with all this equipment. Uh, thank you so much, man, and, and good luck with this. Thank you for you. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate uh, everything you said. Uh, you are an inspiration, and uh, I hope uh, I hope we can. We will maybe do. I always say this with almost every one of my guests. Season two. Season, hopefully, we'll see. <laughs> All right, cool, man. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you very much, everyone. See you.